Alrighty, it looks like I'm making a makeup mirror for my wifey. Here in Russia we have 8th of March, International Women's Day. It's when all the dudes buy flowers and gifts for the women. Of course, it's long overdue now, but this kind of gift is cool for someone who wants to make something themselves to surprise their loved ones. It actually fits all right for any occasion. Christmas, birthday, etc, etc. So today we're gonna take a closer look at the technology, see if there are any pitfalls, talk about wood and what tools will you need to have high-end product. DIY vanity mirror with lights for your woman or man to do makeup. Okay, where do we start? Let's start with lights. It's important, so bear with me. These are 27E 4000 Kelvin 7 watts LED light bulb. They save our electricity. The distance between each one of them should be approximately 15 centimeters, which is 6 inches. 4000 to 5000 Kelvin, as far as I know, is the best color temperature for makeup mirrors. It's not too warm and not too cool at the same time, has nice color rendering and all that good stuff. So what's our plan? Since the bases are this long, we need to sit them and this beautiful mirror inside the box. A frame of some sort, made out of pine planks we bought from a home improvement store. It's very cheap, the cheapest I reckon. Bases inside the box should match the holes we will make on the front part to pull the bulbs in. Oh yeah, I think it's worth mentioning, our bulbs are matte. And I think it's a pretty cool feature, like these soft boxes I've got here pointed at me. Soft light coming out of them won't be uncomfortable for the eye, and that's the whole point, eh? Now the tools you will need are basic ones. A fret saw, a screwdriver, and probably wire cutters. I'll be using the bigger versions because it's faster, and I have them. Drop saw to saw, milling machine to make holes, wire cutters to cut wires. The more home-based way to do it is to buy a cord drill for your electric screwdriver. It's pretty useful all in all, you might use it for something else later as well. Like every crazy night starts with just one beer, every project should start with a plan, a blueprint. Never underestimate it. My blueprint has some nuances, because as you can see here, my mirror is already chipped a bit. So I need to think of at least 2 centimeters, 0.7 inches overlap to cover it. But originally, 5 millimeters, 0.1 inch, should be enough to hold it there tight. Let's get the sewing started then, shall we? Here's the plank. Of course, it's much easier if you have a drop saw in your garage slash workshop because you can choose the angle you want. Much easier. Mine here has 45, 22.5, 30 or 60 degrees. We need a 45 degrees angle to combine the pieces together later. So here's the base. We don't want the base to stick out. Keep that in mind when measuring the width of the plank you use for the side part of the mirror. I've got this sample plank, 4 centimeters wide. Combined with the plank for the front, it should be enough to drown the bases inside. Perfect! Perfect circles! Now we need to make a sampling. Usually it's called quarter sampling, half sampling, I reckon. In general, we need to make a groove for the mirror to sit in. There are many ways to do it. The cheapest one is to buy one of these uh, plow planes. They're, they're also called grooving planes. I've got this bad boy to help me out, a milling machine. So for me, the groove is two centimeters deep and five millimeters wide because as mentioned earlier, my mirror is chipped a bit. Now we make the back part of the mirror out of plywood. 
Again, you can use a fret saw and be done with it. I want to make it quick, so I'll use sewing machine. Might look like I'm bragging, but I'm not. I'm a nice guy with a little time. To make holes for bulbs, you need an electric screwdriver with core drill. This is my screwdriver. It is against the law, you might say. I might say it's fucking awesome. You can also drill a few planks at a time, sticking them together with duct tape. It can be quite dangerous though, because you might lose your grip and it will start spinning it like it's some wicked evil propeller. So please be careful. Another important moment to remember, when you drill through, the fiber of the wood will stick out of the back. To avoid it, I recommend to put a piece of plywood underneath. Actually, the inner part of the frame is not that important, no one's gonna see it anyway. Okay, that's what we have here. Let's check if it's enough for the ball base. Um, so the diameter of the drill bit I've got is the best for the job. It fits just right. Uh, we still need like how much? One, two, three, four, six, six holes? Ah, damn, the most annoying part is that every time you go through, you need to get this little piece out. You know, the piece of wood that gets stuck inside the drill bit. There's another option. You can use Forstner drill bit. It's called... Here's, here's how it's called here, I don't know, Forstner drill bit? It goes through and removes all the wood. As a result, it leaves more sawdust, but it's faster. Derba 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 der, our parts are ready. These are the sides, the back, uh, this obviously is the front. We can now staple them together, but first, we need to see if everything fits. Well, uh, we, we are pretty cool. Our mirror is like, it's really comfy here, thank you very much. It's time to remove it now and staple the pieces together. I've got the stapler for furniture. It can do staples, it can also do nails. I wish it's powerful like this nail gun from Quake Games, but Alas, it cannot even shoot through this carton box. Let's position it. We can even use an angle ruler if we want. Once everything is in its place, the stapler comes in. We first staple the front part. One, two, one, two. Bam! Perfect, it's stapled. Okay, now the frame is still a little bit wobbly. It's not gonna be like that later. Let's apply the mirror again. Vroom, shipow, it fits. I suggest we use these thingies to make, to make it less wobbly. We screw them to the inner part of the frame. In fact, you can use some glue along the groove for the mirror to stick, but it's an optional quest. Okay, everything is smooth. We can now mark the holes to see where the bases will be. I think we also gonna staple the sides together. Staples! Very useful things they are. Plywood fits the frame. It's time to drill through it because yeah, I want the construction to be robust and durable. It already looks nice, it's pretty much almost done. All we need now is to fix the bulb bases on the plywood and paint the whole thing. 
These little gaps won't go away, unfortunately. It's because the planks are cheap and originally made of pieces. Now every base should be on its place, connected together with wires. Also, every base should have 220 volts of alternating current for these bulbs to shine over your pretty face. Uh, may vary depending on your country, I mean the volts. That means every two wires should go through wire connectors and so on, so on, so on, blah, 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 blah. Now all the wiring is ready and it's time to fix every bulb base to where it should be. God, I really hate repetitive labor. It's tedious, annoying and fuck it, that's why. This is our plug. I'm using the one from the washing machine. Devices and appliances get old and break, and it's always nice to dissemble them and use the parts somewhere else. Recycling. It is very important to get the wire through the frame first and then put it together with a wire connector. I always forget. I hope I won't forget this time. Let's plug it and see what's on. I will check the first one and then the last one. The last one's working, but about the first one should work too. That would mean that the connection is correct and legit. And if one or more bulbs are not working, that would mean that the issue is with the bulb itself or the base itself. I personally think it's gonna be okay. Ah, you're so bright! Now we just have to attach the whole thing and, as a sign of decency, fasten the wire. Because during transportation or some other actions, when you reach somewhere with the plug, you might simply tear out the contacts, blow a fuse to hell, which definitely won't be cool. Mmm, ceramics. So fragile. An important point. These are little ratchets on the electric screwdriver. They are there not just for shits and giggles, but for setting the maximum tightening torque, that is, the force with which the fasteners will be tightened in. The number of these ratchets, for example, we have 24 here, correlates with the maximum moment. Here it is approximately 70. We divide it by 24, so each division is approximately 3 newtons. Uh, newton meters. So let's put it around 10 so that fucking screwdriver won't crush anything. Well then, the moment of truth. I'll start with the other side. The wires seem not to be a problem. And a drum roll! Whoop! Yes! Yes! Almost awesome. It looks a bit cheap unpainted, so you would have to cover it with at least one layer of some sort of interior paint and a roller. Roller is quicker to use, brush strokes will be visible, the spray won't cover it well enough, and we don't fucking need solvent paint here, so we have to think it through. No, well of course you need to take it apart in order to paint well. I want it to get sloppy a bit, to nail this crap and... Uh, but no, that probably won't work. Or will it? Post your answers in the comments! <laughs> Fuck no, of course let's do it. First I want to screw in the bulbs and check it, all this... Check, check the whole thing. And ahead, they are... what the fuck? Oh! <laughs> Another important moment. 
how to fix the facade. The front of the furniture is called the facade. I do it with furniture nails. Hammer them in here, they will be covered with paint, and most importantly, we will be able to disassemble this whole thing. Always make sure the design is dismountable, because if there is a fuck up somewhere, we'll need to change it, especially when it's DIY. We have self-tapping screws in the back, so we can unwind, unscrew the back, and attend, so to speak, to our DIY thing. Sand the facade. Why? The paint cover will be better, the dirt that's stuck in the process will get removed, and we'll remove the traces of the marking pencil. So, as I said, the paint will cover much better. The sander should be about 120 or slightly higher, up to 400, depending on what kind of surface you plan to get. Well, anyway, not 40 or 60. Before painting, I would like to disassemble the, the whole thing so the so that the paint won't get on the lamp socket. The back side we keep made of plywood. Well, who the fuck cares? I want to put this thing against the wall where no one will see the back. Accordingly, if you want to put it in the middle of the room or you're making it as a gift, then you can paint the back side. Logic is our everything. Anyway, don't work yourself to death. All work and no play makes Jack a doll boy. The time has come for finishing work. Finish him? But actually, how? We can use ordinary water dispersion paint, silicone paint, latex paint, acrylic. Who gives a shit? Just choose the required color. We don't need nothing special from the paint. It only should be washable. You know, in cosmetics, there are all these sticky pigments, projectiles that can get very stuck. So it's nice if the paint can be washed. Ta-da! It took me about 2,000 rubles and about 5 to 6 hours to make this mirror. It's important to remember that the lamps have their own coloring characteristics, such as power output and color temperature. When applying makeup to your pretty mug, it's apparently very important. So, now we should wipe the mirror, I guess? But it's 2,000 rubles if you have an electric screwdriver and a saw, which actually should be in every household, I think. This is a quick and not crazy guide that allows us to create some new item. DIY as it is. It was Danya Kraster with you, and if you like that kind of video, subscribe to my channel, press like, and as I said before, we will have three formats. Crazy guides, simple guides, and information. This is a simple guide that anyone can follow. That's all, I'll go put on my makeup. Fuck me, how many pimples I have on my mug. Haven't seen them before.